Hey YouTube, welcome back. Uh, today we continue our series in the system design of Instagram. In the previous videos, we did talk about the um, functional requirements. Uh, no, no. We did talk about the functional requirements. We also talked about the non-functional requirements. After that, we did talk about the capacity estimation. Um, uh, and um, we ended this. Just It should be fit. Yeah. After that, we did talk about the high-level design of Instagram. We did talk about all the important components, but we don't. We did talk about them in just high-level design. We didn't get deep inside them. And after that, we did talk about the database design of Instagram. We did talk about the relational database design. After that, we did talk about the non-relational database design. For example, the feeds that we are using to um, the graph, the graph database that we're using to generate feeds for users. And after that, we did talk about um, how Instagram will handle the, the um, search indexes and how basically Instagram handle um, searching in general. Today, we will talk about how Instagram, um, how Instagram stores billions of photos and videos. And this video will be pretty small. It will not be long at all. Um, so yeah, let's just try to think about this one. So in your systems and interviews, I, I am pretty sure that your interviewer will ask you about how you will be able or how will you update or upload the photos because you need to think about something. Um, Instagram has billions of, um, of photos and videos and the, the, how, the, how actually they are stored, like how can a single post go viral and load instantly across the world. Uh, today we are breaking down how modern platforms like Instagram handle media storage at massive scale and also how to make this quite reliable, scalable and efficient and fast. So if we want to talk next, uh, we need to talk about um, the, um, the, um, the scale of the problem. So Instagram handles petabytes of media. That's uh, like that's millions of gigabytes worth of images and videos uploaded by users every day. It's again billions of millions, millions of gigabytes. Sorry. So, and all of this data needs to be first. We need to make it durable. We need to make it low latency. That need to load quickly. And we need to make to give it a global accessible, so it's accessible anywhere, pretty fast. And all of that three things, we need to think about them. So how we will do this? If you um, can, no, not like that. Let's go back. If you remember our design, we did talk about that. We will use a blob storage. And the blob storage here, um, it is a solution for this one. Like to handle this uh, platform uses like distributed object storage, uh, like Amazon S3, for example, or Google Cloud Storage. Uh, basically, each media file is stored as an object and, and each object can be accessed via a unique URL. But there is something quite, um, I would say that it will... Um, it will make you stand out in your system design interviews that you need to talk about okay let's let's go back to our um, uh, our board here because there's something that i need to talk about it's pretty important in my opinion which is to use the the upload the 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 oh no 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 this is too sick uh, how how i how, how i remove this no, no, remove it, remove it. I need to be removed. Okay. Ah, uh, I guess I should make this, um, this, uh, this quite bigger. Okay. Okay, this is great. So, what we mean by talking about uploading, uh, with, um, with, with, um, with pre-signed your L. So if you want to think about that, so we have here the client and the client will send the request to the, okay, this is too thick. Is there is a way to make it quite thinner than this? No, there is no way. Okay, I will I will make sure that in the proper, in the future, will not make it that thick at all. 
or we can do it like that we can do it like that so we have here um, the client okay and the client will send to the request the the uh, upload the 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 image to the back end and the back end by itself will upload it to the s3 prop storage for example and the s3 prop storage will send back a url to the back end which the back end will send it back to the client it looks this process looks quite long but it works it works it works perfectly but we can use uploading with pre-signed url how this will happen so instead of doing all of that that basically let me um delete this Basically, the client here, um, the user will post, uh, when, when the user wants to post, they will request the back end to give them a pre-signed URL, okay? And this pre-signed URL, that URL will give a temporary permission to upload directly to the object storage. So the client will upload directly to S3 and they get back to and they will get back the URL and they will send it to the back end. So this is way more faster and way more smooth, smoother. But why this matter? Because first we have offloads traffic from the back end. The back end doesn't have to handle uploading um, um, uploading uh, images anymore. Also, it reduces server cost and response time. Also, it makes uploads way more faster for um, for users. Okay, next. Um, First, I guess I need to remove this. Okay. Um, next, we need to talk about the high durability with replication. Because in my opinion, I guess it's a pretty important um, aspect to talk about. So, to avoid losing media due to like a hardware failure or natural disaster, object storage services will automatically replicate files across multiple data centers. And this will give us, not, I guess if you, I don't know if you see, I hope it's, it's visible. Yeah, it's visible now. So this will give us nine nines of durability. It's 11 nines, not, not, not nine nines. It's 11 nines of durability. So basically our data will not be lost at all. Next, we need to talk about the CDN. So, if you want to store, we right now we now we know how how to store the data, but storing only is half of the problem. Users need to view and the view the 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 posts, images, videos quite instantly anywhere in the world. To make this happen, we will use what we say, what we talked about, which is a CDN, and CDN is a is a short for a content delivery network, like a Cloudflare, for example, or Amazon Cloud um, CloudFront. Basically, what will happen? This uh, CDN will store the images to locations closer to the client, so reading these images will be way more faster, and um, and this one first. Um, this the media is cached again at at edges location to closer to the client. It's um, closest to server equals um, fastest load time, and also it will reduce traffic on the original storage. Um, if you want to take a real world example, we can just uh, let's say that you um, we have like a, a client in Berlin and viewing a viral post originally from like uh, from New York, for example, or in Brazil. Thanks to the CDN, you're not waiting for the server across the ocean to send you, um, to send you this, um, yeah, to send you this uh, this photo. You're getting the image from a local cache nearby. That's it. It's a fast, efficient, and it's seamless. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. That's how apps like Instagram serve billions of images and and um, and, uh, and videos quickly, reliably, and at scale. If you enjoyed this video, just subscribe and all that shit, yeah. Do it if you want. And thank you for watching this video.